The Book of True Life Teachings of the Divine Master Volume 11 Teaching 314 Once again I have listened to you and the union of your prayers has been the best hymn with which you have given me. From each one of you a fruit of love emerges that is like a note of harmony with your father and in union your thoughts form a concert full of spiritual purity. In some I contemplate that this note is a prayer it is thanksgiving for the benefits that they have received from me. In others, that thought is one of sadness and bitterness for the vicissitudes they have encountered on the path. Moreover, with the union of these thoughts, you form an act of faith, which is the homage and respect for my divinity. That is the communication that the Father expected from the spirit of his children. That is the love offering that you have never wanted to give. But the prayer that through the ages I have taught you, and which you have not always been able to practice for lack of spiritual development, it is the one that guides you, and under its light you are achieving true spiritual communication with your God. While you are under the influence of my word, the world, with its ways strewn with thistles, it disappears for you. On the seventh day, your flesh rests from its earthly labors, and your free spirit, like a lark, comes in after the exhaustible source of my wisdom. He comes before my manifestation and is strengthened in the effluvium of my love that I offer in the teaching of my word. I do not come looking for faith in some or unbelief in others. I do not come to look for great merits in ones or small ones in others. No people. My divine love is perfect. I am the father of all and by giving you my teaching, I give you the same essence, the same love. If humanity as a whole listened to my word, there would not be blessings for some, and for others claim, or my claim would be general, or my blessing would be for all. But it is the time when I communicate through human understanding, and not everyone will contemplate this manifestation. The number of my witnesses destined to listen to my teaching through the spokesperson is very small, but I certainly say that these witnesses will know how to prepare. Humanity will hear my word through their lips, because you will all know that the Holy Spirit was teaching you through human understanding. For this reason, as a father, I prepare you so that after 1950, when you go after the crowds and have to speak in my name, do not mix my word that is true with impurity and lies, that she gushes like a torrent of crystalline water, because the origin of these waters, which is my spirit, is clean and pure. Those that flow from your lips, they also have to be pure. I want you always to be clean, to be like an oasis among men, where all those thirsty for triumph may quench their thirst and do not find in those waters the impurity of silt. When this time of teaching has passed, you will say to me, Father, why were you among us so little a time? Why did you leave so soon? And I will answer you. The duration of my teaching to my disciples of the third era was marked by the clock of eternity, and in it you will be able to understand and continue the lessons of the times past. I have not come to give you a different teaching. I must give you in my mandates until the last of my words so that you do not hesitate at the time of tests. It is my will that you have an answer for each question, for each doubt a ray of light, for each weakness the strength of my law. Thus you will succeed in your fulfillment, recreating your spirit in the most beautiful and sublime mission that I have given you since the beginning of time, which is to redeem and forgive for love to practice well, not for the good of yourselves, but to please your Father and perfect your spirit. The practice of your mission will give you peace when you find yourself strong by the virtue of love. You will teach humanity that today I find naked, hungry, and sick, to which only the practice of good will bring for its spirit, the balm that is the peace of God. That will be the teaching that you will bring to humanity in my name when well-being and peace, which is the supreme gift of the Spirit, are not found in science or in riches 
or in the affections of this world. Then they will find their way to the humble mission and will go by his works of love and truth. Then men will discover the secret of peace and cleanse their hearts to take perfect peace for my kingdom because the peace of men is made many times out of the fear of one another. That apparent peace is anxiety. With it there is no peace of mind. Fight, disciples. Form in the hearts of my children a kingdom of peace from which they can live in a better world, a strong world, not like the one that is presented to me today as fragile. Because with a faint breath or shock from the elements I could destroy the vain and arrogant work of men, but it is the work of my children and I respect. I allow it to bear fruit because I know that at last, tired of their works, they will accept the teachings of my love. All my works have love and justice as their principle. All that you contemplate, that you come to know through understanding, even the smallest atoms, lives, and throbs on a path of love and justice, because everything has been created by me, and in my spirit there is no impurity, nor is there imperfection. Many of the great works man shows me, and to which he has consecrated his life, his strength, and his pride, they do not have love and justice as a principle, and any work that does not have the principle will be destroyed and only the light of experience will be the fruit of men. Man has established his new life in science, investigating and building his tower of pride, his tower of Babel, from which he does not worship me, does not recognize me, but truly I tell you that it will be the man who is confused and in your confusion destroy your new tower of Babel. Then mankind will remember that man from the first time he built his tower of vanities of mistrust towards me and the consequences it had on the past times will be repeated in the third era. Materialism, pride, and arrogance will be brought down and the confusion among men. The wise will doubt their wisdom. The men of science, believing they have found the goal, will find a fathomless arcane. The elements will turn against the scientists because they have not been used with love and there will be chaos among men. Remember that I am the beginning and the end, science and knowledge. I have given that light to men, and I have recreated in their works when they have been put at the service of good, when they have taken the gifts and virtues that I have adorned in them for the development of the spirit and the mind. Then they have worshipped me. They have fulfilled faithfully the mission that I entrusted to them. But when they have put their gifts at the service of evil, vanity, or desire of greatness, then they have not obeyed me and have twisted their path. But in my wisdom, I have used them to carry out my divine plans. I have taken them as instruments of my justice for an example to humanity. Am I the enemy of science? Am I an obstacle to the progress and evolution of my children, who so believed it? It is because he has not known how to interpret my word. He has not understood the Father and his truth, because every gift or faculty that is in man must have development, because evolution is a universal law. Everything has to be perfected in my creation. All of you have to return to me, clean, perfect, and in multiplication. But if for moments I have interfered with the will of man, it is because sin and human evil intention have a limit in my justice. When humanity has passed through this crucible, when the light of truth rises victorious over the darkness, then, O oh beloved people, men will build on firm foundations the new tower, which will be a temple of recognition of God, a sanctuary of peace, where there is never any discussion about my existence, where the knowledge of one is that of all. There will be no idolatry, mysticism, or adultery to my law. Then men will raise with my help over the valley of tears a world of peace where they flourish all the virtues, where all the sciences are perfected. Within all the institutions they will feel my voice vibrate that will tell them, 
love one another. In their harmonious life, men will see a reflection of the eternal mansion. If in the midst of his imperfections, man has discovered so much, what will it be when he watches and prays and approaches me? What will it be when you approach my source of light and truth and respect humility and love? The Holy Spirit will overflow in man all the revelations that it has retained in its arcana. When that is, won't be necessary that the scientist breaks his understanding by consulting his books, because his spirit will know how to lead him to the source inexhaustible of my wisdom. There you will find me always waiting for you to reveal new and great lessons. Thus I will lead you from revelation to revelation, from dwelling to dwelling, from perfection to perfection, until eternity. For those times to come, I prepare you. All of you will witness the fulfillment of these prophecies. All of you will have the joy of being a harmonious note in the Lord's concert. If in your desecration of my law, I serve as you to manifest my justice, so also, when you live in harmony with my mandates, I will serve myself of yourselves, to reward you with my revelations, with my messages of love. Now I am building a shrine in the hearts of my children, but in this building I must have the help from all of you. What sanctuary does the Father refer to, O people? That of your spirit, who at this time I contemplate in ruins, but I will help you in their restoration. The sanctuary of the Lord has always existed. It has no beginning or end. It is in his own work. It is his divine spirit, an infinite, which is waiting for your preparation so that you feel within it where everyone is in harmony and perfection. Your planet, being an atom in the middle of the immensity of the universe, its mission is to be an image of that harmonious temple. For this reason, when you come to this recognition, let it not be the only word or theory, no disciples, that it be something that you feel and live. Then you will not need quarry temples. Your spirit will not seek those places that prevent him from knowing his God better. He will seek freedom. And in the blessed grace that I have been confident you will find the scale of your perfection. It will be then that man will feel accompanied and contemplated by the Father. When you see that under your feet there is no filthy dust, then you will understand that your home is a small sanctuary for me, that your world, being an atom among the immensity of the creation, as a whole, forms a universal sanctuary of God. All the worlds in which my children are perfecting themselves are like an infinite garden. Today you are tender bushes, but I promise you that the crystalline waters of my teachings will not fail you, and that with their irrigation you will grow in wisdom and love, until one day in eternity, when the trees are full of fruits and full of maturity, the divine gardener can recreate in his work tasting the fruits of his own love. Thus I prepare you, disciples. I open before you the book of life, so that you no longer look for a place determined to worship me, so that in any place or time you feel me, whether in the fields, the valleys, the mountains, or the sea. Your presence anywhere is enough to make it sacred, because I am in you. If I speak to you in this way, and teach you. It is to remove the fanaticism that you have traditionally had, not to create a new fanaticism among you. See that my teaching, while being profound, is simple and clear. Before you become teachers, I want to see you as good disciples, that you learn from me, so that you do not confuse men, that to every question you answer firmly and truthfully, and sweetness and love because that word penetrates deeper into hearts. I have told you that on many occasions a word of wisdom and love has been enough for a spirit to be saved. That word has not been lost because it has remained like an eternal fire seal in that spirit. That word was his salvation. 
he not only carried it in his earthly life, but even to the hereafter. That is why I come to inherit my word, which is like a key that opens the way of the peace for the spirits. Do not fear the crossroads. Do not bend for the vicissitudes. Destroy the doubt. Deepen in my doctrine. And that force will give you great happiness. Woe to the weak, O oh, those who have not been strengthened in my teaching, because they will stumble along the way. I want my people, my witness, my disciple, to be the strong one on the roads to save the crowds that I will put in your step. Today you fail to understand the strength of your spirit, because you are still weak in the faith. But that faith I will strengthen with great trials, the confidence that you have in me, you must also have in yourselves, since the gifts that you carry I have given to you. My communication through human understanding will soon end, and after 1950 you will no longer listen to me through this communication, but you will not look for those who are spokespersons or faculties to invoke me or invoke my spiritual world, not in the greatest trial will you attempt to desecrate my will. Prepare yourselves, so that with strength of my teachings you prevent the advance of many advance, and avoid those that be my will. But if you sleep, those tests will have to come, it will make your work difficult. How many men and women go on paths other than the one I have traced for you, bearing the same gifts in their spirit that I have? If those men and women find the good teaching in you, they will know their gifts and will reach a broad development in the knowledge of my teachings. But if they did not find the good teacher in their path, some will be confused. Others will take their gifts to develop them under their own idea and will. Others will be instruments of invisible forces, which may well be of light, but can also be of darkness. Therefore, disciples, do not sleep for your fulfillment. After 1950, I am going to entrust with you some time to meditate in your mission, and that in that meditation, you will arrive at the unification of the knowledge in my teaching. Through that unification, you will face events and struggle. Thus, I warn you of all the tests, and in this last year of my presence among you, after this manifestation, I will speak of all the dangers, and I will give you the way to overcome them. Listen well to what I am going to tell you. In the bosom of a great church, the ministers will speak to humanity of the Holy Spirit. They will speak of the second coming. They will talk about the seventh seals. They will make the call to the peoples and will pretend to choose and point to the 144,000 with the mark with which I have already indicated that has been my will. But I will touch all men in the shepherds of humanity I will manifest myself through the consciousness and I will put you through the great test. In that time I will know who of you I will serve to give proof to those. I will speak through you with the preparation that I have come to give you. It will not be man who will make known to humanity the revelations of the Holy Spirit because in my high judgments only I can. The Marian Trinitarian Spiritualist Doctrine. No man has revealed it to you. I, as Father, from the first era, announced it to you through my prophets. Through Yashawana, the words of the Father, I announced it to you. I promised it to you as a not too distant manifestation. In this third era, communicating through the human understanding, I came to fulfill my promise and reveal to you the lessons that were hidden. It was not man who has given the gifts to your spirit. I entrusted it to you when you sprang from me. It has not been man who has drawn the Trinitarian symbol on your front. It has been the Lord who has marked in the spirit. It was not man who ordered your mission. It was my omnipotent voice. How was the Father to allow such desecration and confusion to men? I the Lamb emulated. I am the only one worthy to untie the seals of the book of wisdom, of the great book of life, which encloses the destiny of everything created. I, the Alpha and the Omega of the Divine Word, 
I am the only one who can tell you the intimate revelations of my divinity. How am I to allow the profane and disrespectful to take the divine lessons according to his will, to surprise the ignorant and become great among men? Sprouts of these desecrations will appear, but it will only be for you to wake up, beloved people. Signs of profanation, false testimonies, false miracles will appear among men. False prophets, the false manifestations that they will attribute to my divinity. But that will only be a test of the longing for advancement of the spirits, for the coming of the Holy Spirit, for the fulfillment of my prophecies and all my promises. Do not delay the time of my spiritual arrival among men. Do not be, with your lack of preparation, an obstacle to my manifestation among humanity through your works. Because although you are not the Redeemer, nor will you proclaim that you are going to save men, nor are you the only ones in this work, you are the fertile land that waited patiently for my seed of redemption. You are the legions of my light, of my armies of peace and truth, that at this time are already fighting for the establishment of peace. But I am preparing you to fulfill your mission as strong Israel, a mission that you have not fulfilled through the ages, but today you must conclude so that you arrive at this mansion of light that waits, from which you will contemplate broader horizons, where you will practice my justice and my love, and go rising in the scale of perfection until occupying the place that corresponds to you in the bosom of God. Are they fantasies that I have come to give you? No, people. To you as humans, I give the moral teaching and I clothe you with the virtue so that you may live with love and peace in your home so that your bread is not bitter. My doctrine imparts well-being, strength, and progress but this sustenance is not enough for your spirit. The spirit needs a superior delicacy to continue after the death of his flesh, its journey towards infinity. For that day I will come to give the spirit teachings that seem like fantasies to men deep and unfathomable lessons for the imagination more awake. I entrust this key to your spirit so that with it it opens all the doors that it finds in its path and so continue your journey towards your spiritual improvement. My doctrine includes all teachings. It is the way, the truth, and the life. That's why you should practice it in all moments of your existence. Give the doctrine the highest place of your spirit and give matter what belongs to you. Give to God what is God and Caesar's what is Caesar's. If you learn to be fair in your life, your step will be firm and doubt and uncertainty will disappear. When the time of your preaching comes, when your weakness and superfluous practices have disappeared, when you only take care of what is necessary and elevated for your spirit, then you will enjoy a greater time to practice my work. When you find on your way the needy of what you have, you will not show yourself how Thomas in doubt, nor like Peter in his moment of cowardice. Neither will you be like Judas, weak before vanities and temptations. Your spirit says to me, Master, why do you compare us with those extraordinary spirits? And the master says, it is true my disciples of the second era were great spirits who worked among humanity for their spiritual advancement, advancement that the men of the time had not achieved, not even in the present. But they were spirits like you, and were also human like you. His virtue fought against his imperfections, but making their spirits stronger, they conquered human frailties, and they devoted themselves to the practice of my teachings reaching for means of their virtue and their love, the faithful fulfillment of my doctrine. The example that each one of them left was worthy of the teacher who taught them. You will give great examples worthy of the master who has come to speak to you in this third era. Why do you doubt of me and of you? I will wait patiently for you to interpret my word, and I want you to also patiently teach humanity. I, the very patient master, explain clearly the lesson that you have not understood, and the proof that you did not know overcoming it. 
I will put it back in your path, and when you defeat it, your spirit feels strong and gives me thanks. So the master, taking the book of wisdom, teaches you a new lesson. But when the book is kept in the chest of your heart, I will tell you, you are no longer the disciples, you are the teachers. Go to humanity that ignores my revelations and open it before the book of wisdom, and with the same patience with which I have taught you, teach your brothers. If I have shown you your defects, it has been so that you can correct them. Also, when you go among your brothers, and in them you find the same defects, remember that they are corrected with patience and love. Have I brought violence into my teachings? Have I used the whip to teach you? No, disciples. I have forgiven with sweetness. You men, are you already practicing patience with your partner? You women, have you been patient with your husband and both husbands? Have you had patience to correct your children? Yes, you have practiced in that way. You have imitated me. If you have not done it in that way, I forgive you. But I will test you on the way until you come out ahead. I leave you once again my word as a seed of love. When you go to sow it, think that the material seed is not born at the moment of being sown. Much less can it flourish and bear fruit. All this requires love, merit, and self-denial to grow. The land that I grant you is the heart of humanity. The seed is my revelation as the Holy Spirit. Consecrate yourselves to your cultivation. Love it. Bless it. Because with your example, you will be teaching new workers who will be with you sowers of the third era. Learn to know my teaching. Where can you find it? In the word that pours from the spokesman? No disciples. You have my teaching in the essence of this word. When you come to communicate spirit to spirit with your Lord, how can you recognize my divine voice? In the voice of your consciousness, there you will have me eternally teaching you all. My love will move your most sensitive fibers, but it will be the harmony of your conscience that will make you listen to my divine concert. And many of you will contemplate me in the sweet silhouette of Yashawana. I must warn you that the silhouette of Yashawana is not the perfect way for you to look at me. If I told you in the past, every eye will see me. I gave to you to understand that you would know the truth, although I must tell you, I will limit myself according to the evolution of each spirit. Plus when you ascend the scale of perfection, then you will see me in all my splendor. For now, do not try to imagine me in any way. Meditate. If your spirit being limited is essence, it is light. What form can my universal spirit have that has no beginning and no end? Leave the unfathomable to the privacy of my canum. Watch and pray. And when human death sets your spirit free, I will draw one more veil from it in my infinite book of revelations, so that he knows the Father and knows himself. So that when you reach the hereafter, you will be ecstatic before the contemplation of a better world, of a wonderful world that awaits you. But that will not be the last you die. Pray, people. Pray for humanity. With your prayer or without it, I am with everyone, but long for it to flourish between my children, the precept to love one another. I have visited your home and contemplated your needs. I have left you a present of love. You have wanted to learn my divine language. I do know yours, even if it is imperfect. Walk firmly in my path, and you will find it strewn with wonders. Who has told you that the time of my miracles has passed? Isn't your existence a miracle of love? Don't you present the danger looming around you? Do you not feel the danger that surrounds your world? Why don't you perish? Because a miracle of love protects you. Everything that surrounds you has been created by me as a marvelous miracle of love to adorn my children, very loved ones. The time of miracles is in eternity. I am an infinite miracle of love for all my children. My peace be with you. This reading was from the Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 11, Teaching 314. 
You can find links to download this PDF at coachinthefight.shop.